Don't let the Barbie movie's dreamy day globe look fool you. This film runs on hate, not affection. Now, the movie's inspired, of course, by the Mattel toy that dates back to 1959, and it loathes men to a degree that would make a women's studies major blush. It hates the Barbie toy itself, too, dubbing it fascist and worse throughout the movie. Barbie also hates women with kind memories of that doll. Just know that you were supporting the patriarchy all those years. Maybe even now. (laughs) That leaves an ambitious film, no doubt. It's got some good scattered laughs throughout, but it disintegrates completely during a disastrous third act. Here's a peek of the film's trailer. Hey, Barbie. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You can me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday and so is tomorrow and every day from now until forever. Do you guys ever think about dying? When my heart some things have been happening that might be related. When my Cold shower Ooh. falling off my roof. Ah! And my heels are on the ground. <gasps> Flat feet! No! The Barbie opens with a pretty good idea. What if Barbie Land existed as another universe outside of our own? The toys as people concede is funny at first, but it quickly loses steam, like a lot of running gags do. Now, stereotypical Barbie, as she's played with panache by Margot Robbie, she finds herself victim to feelings from the other realm, the real world. All of a sudden, she's thinking about death. It's interrupting her dreamy existence that everyone loves in Barbie land. Well, except the guys. The various Kens, led by Ryan Gosling, well, they're there to be either ogled or completely ignored, and mostly the latter. This uber-feminist realm has no need, desire, or even empathy for Ken Nation, and the lads are perfectly content with this existence because they don't know any better. When Barbie and Ken leave their world to visit the real one, aka ours, everything changes. Ken discovers the patriarchy, and he likes it. The screenplay literally mentions the word patriarchy ten times. Ten! Barbie encounters rampant sexism. It's almost like you're living in the AMC Mad Men world. You know, if they had said Barbie during the 1950s, this would have made a little bit more sense. In the real world today, ah, not so much. So can Barbie learn why her perfect life is starting to unravel? Will Ken bring the patriarchy back home with him? with a movie that starts with a lot of promise curdled during the critical third act? Well, the answer to the latter is absolutely, and it's sad. You know, director co-writer Greta Gerwig is a talented person, and she establishes some pretty inventive ways to bring this toy to life. That's not easy. You try it. Just think of the ideas you could do about this movie. It's, It's complicated. This is a toy, after all. The director even drops references to actual Barbie accessories during the film, which is pretty clever and funny. And she uncorks a very good commercial about the new depressed Barbie doll mid-movie. Again, playing into the theme of the film, very smart. Now, the production design is first-rate. This looks amazing. I mean, I think if you consider Barbie like an old home, you'd say it has good bones. Now, Gerwig, along with her collaborator slash partner, Noah Bombach, they've got an agenda to push. And that agenda drains the joy from their creation time after time. And it starts from the opening minutes. There's a cringeworthy scene set in the Barbie Land all-female Supreme Court. Oh, yeah, by the way, where's Amy Coney Barrett? You're not going to see her. It's all about feminism, empowerment, down with the patriarchy. And every time the film gains momentum, there's a funny scene, a good moment, a, a, a cute cameo. It stops to make a mini-speech, to make a little lecture, just to stop things cold. The characters can't move beyond this because there's always another moment just like it around the corner. It's actually the perfect encapsulation of what woke storytelling is and why it stinks. The agenda matters more than the narrative, and it can't be denied. Now, given all that, Barbie could still offer some powerful arguments about sexism in the Western world, for sure but with a less heavy-handed approach. Show 
Don't Tell. It's the oldest storytelling saw in the book, and they ignore it. This movie tells and tells and tells until the story has nowhere to go. That leaves a third act, which is a disaster. It's got poorly choreographed fight scenes, dance numbers that make no sense. You listen, dance numbers rarely make sense, but it really comes into play here. And of course, conclusions that feel, gosh, it made me feel creepy. It's almost anti-human. I, I can't say more without spoiling things, but when you see it, you'll know what I mean. This movie hates men so much, it hurts. Even a key character's husband is emasculated, and he's got maybe 20, 30 seconds of screen time? It happens twice. And guess who does it? His wife and his daughter. I think they still love him. I think they still care about him. But they're going to emasculate him as much as humanly possible in his very limited screen time. Wow. The Ryan Gosling's Ken is cruel and then dopey and then bored and then confused. And of course, he's drowning in a sea of masculine cliches, which is really fine. But don't you dare trot out any feminine cliches. That'll, that's not going to work here. And the rest of the Kens, there's a lot of Kens, like there's a lot of Barbies. Well, is it, is it, is it fair to say they seem kind of gay? And they also have no inner life whatsoever. They are just blank slates, every last one of them. Who needs Ken? Of course, we can't have as so much as a, a, a hint of romance between Robbie's Barbie and Gosling's Ken. <laughs> oh, that's gross. That's not empowering. Robbie's Barbie even says flat out at one point early in the movie to Ken, I don't want you here. <laughs> Never mind that little girls bought millions and millions of Ken dolls so their Barbie could have a romance for the ages. That doesn't further this agenda, so they put it on the scrap heap. America Ferrara plays a mother who's pining for her Barbie-infused youth. She played with Barbies back in the day. She still got one, and she still cares about it. And, of course, her character delivers a TED Talk late in the movie that gives the whole game away. It's a feminist screed about everything that's bad about being a woman. And she literally says at one point in a different sequence, I, it's literally impossible to be a woman. <laughs> Does this sound like a fun time at the movies? Now, of course, the movie just screeches to a halt during that big feminist speech. The movie never recovers, but how could it? Ferrara's daughter on screen isn't exactly happy to meet the real Barbie. Here's what she says when they first meet. You represent everything wrong with our culture. You destroy the planet with your glorification of rampant consumerism. You fascist. Oh, and please buy Mattel products after seeing our new movie. <laughs> That's amazing. Will Ferrell looks lost. He's playing the Mattel CEO. He's trying to track down that runaway Barbie. Is he a cold, cunning capitalist? Is he a guy sworn to uphold the Barbie legacy at all costs? Is he a male feminist, a eager to make the world a better place through his toys? Darned if the movie knows. That <laughs> leaves the comic actor, who's really good in everything he does, and he's fine here to the best of his ability, but he's basically wandering from scene to scene in utter confusion. He drops out of the movie for long stretches of time. He doesn't really matter. He's not exactly a villain. I don't know what he is. It makes no sense. The only thing missing from this Barbie? Those red handmaid's tail costumes. I think they're saving them from the sequel. You know, I predicted almost all of this a while back. I read the tea leaves. It wasn't hard. The actors would say certain things about the movie. The early test screenings would leak here and there. It's Greta Gerwig, for crying out loud. She's an uber-feminist director, a very talented one for sure, and she's made much better movies than this. And there's no way, no way at all, that Hollywood would tell the Barbie story straight, have fun with it, and not use this to push some kind of agenda. So it really isn't a big surprise. But what is interesting, and I think it's fascinating, is how this all went down. And I think there's a huge lesson here. From the jump, the Barbie marketing team, and kudos to them, they should have the biggest cookie bouquet baskets on their desk this weekend. They've been on point with their messaging. Make it fun, make it frothy, and add as much pink as possible. Talk about pink, pink all the time. Pink, 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 pink. Lots of pink. Play at Rongo Robbie's beauty. Also, talk about Ryan Gosling's chiseled abs. Lean into the diverse cast, but don't be divisive about it. The film's first trailer was brilliant, too. It shared almost nothing about the movie. It just showed a clever opening that was inspired by the great film, the 2001 A Space Odyssey. 
you didn't know what was going on. It was all visuals, all curiosity. And the second trailer wasn't much more coherent, and I mean it in a good way. We really didn't know much about the story, but boy, did everyone look beautiful. No lectures, no clunky lines attacking capitalism, like a certain Dial of Destiny quote. Nothing. But why? If America wants, man, man, we need a woke feminist Barbie to to set things right in our culture. Why didn't Warner Brothers shout it from the rooftops? This is a woke movie. This will change the world. This is Feminism 101. Because the marketers knew we don't want that. We wanted the Barbie of old. Pretty, fun, outrageous, colorful, glamorous. And I can anecdotally share why I think that's the case. The Denver screening of the film that I saw had a lot of press, but also a ton of general audience members, the folks, as Bill O'Reilly is often saying. Now, the people who weren't part of the press, almost entirely women. Again, you expect that from a Barbie movie. I, I get that. And they were dressed to the nines, high heels, flattering dresses, lots of beautifully applied makeup. They looked gorgeous. That's the Barbie experience they wanted to see and they wanted to share. Well, did they get it? (laughs) Well, I think some of the smarter punchlines from the movie landed as expected. I heard laughter for sure. But that terrible, awful third act, man, you could hear a pin drop in the theater. This was not a crowd excited, thrilled, engaged by the movie. Now, like I said before, this is very anecdotal, no doubt. But I think it's interesting. Now, opening weekend for the movie is expected to be huge. Again, credit goes to those marketers. They nailed it. But what will the audience reactions be, you know, across the country? Now, woke feminists will cheer. I'm seeing that right now on social media. I shared my review of the film on Twitter, and boy, I've been hammered every day. I guess it's a phrase I wasn't aware of where that people say, I'll be seated or I'm seated. Well, you know, I'm I'm learning every day, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you, people who are angry at my tweets and my review. But how large is that demographic? I mean, I maybe got 100 or so tweets about that. Is that going to fuel the film? Will audiences who are salivating over a sexy, glamorous Barbie and the beautiful Margot Robbie, are they going to be satisfied by this movie? Or are they going to feel cheated? I think the answer may hold us the key to any Barbie sequel. Maybe even remind Hollywood that if you're going to go woke, you better keep it a secret as long as humanly possible. Well, thanks for listening to this bonus episode of the Hollywood and Total Podcast. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes. Maybe give a five-star review if you feel that you've got it in you. Or just check it out wherever you find your favorite podcast shows. And of course, tell a friend. But just not Greta Gerwig. I'm pretty sure she'd hate this show as much as her movie hates the dudes.